We see the term quite a bit, but what is it? How do we implement it into our setups? What is back focus? Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're gonna to be talking about a term that I'm sure you've seen quite a bit, back focus. We're gonna talk about what back focus is, how it affects your telescope, and also how to use it to get your draw tube in an ideal position during focusing. And then in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to fine tune your back focus to accommodate different accessories that have very specific back focus requirements. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's head on over and learn about back focus. Back focus in a nutshell is the spacing between your camera sensor and a specified point within your imaging train. Now, the simplest explanation without getting too technical is as your telescope receives light, your telescope will direct light to different components within the telescope. And in the final stages, that light is directed to a point called the focal plane. Now, your camera sensor needs to be aligned with that focal plane in order to achieve focus. Now I have here a basic diagram that I made. And as you can see, this is a diagram of a Newtonian reflector. Now different telescopes work differently. Refractors, Newtonian reflectors, Schmidt Cassegrain, but the concept is all the same. Now in this diagram, if you take a look at these bold arrows, that is demonstrating the light entering the aperture of the Newtonian reflector and heading towards the primary mirror at the back. These next set of bold arrows is demonstrating the light reflecting off of the primary mirror and being directed towards the secondary mirror. And finally, this last set of bold arrows is demonstrating the light being reflected off of the secondary mirror and being directed through the focuser towards your camera sensor. And as you can see, these two arrows eventually form a point. And that point is the focal plane and the point at which you want your camera sensor to be aligned with. And focusing your telescope is the process of moving your focuser assembly to align your camera sensor with the focal point as you see here. And sometimes that requires spacers. Now it's important to understand that the focal plane produced by your telescope is always in a fixed position. And what I mean by that is the lenses of your telescope or in this case here, the mirrors are fixed to the body meaning that the focal plane produced by your telescope is always in a fixed position. That means that the only adjustment that we have to meet your camera sensor to the focal plane is with your focuser assembly, racking it in or racking it out. Now the general rule of thumb for back focus is 55 millimeters. And some cameras come with spacers to meet the 55 millimeters, some don't. Just make sure to check the what's in the box section to see if your camera comes with spacers. If it doesn't, that's okay. The spacers are pretty readily available with astrophotography suppliers. Now, in the case of my ASI 533MC here and my ASI 2600MC, both of those came with two spacers to meet the 55 millimeters. One is a 16 and a half millimeter spacer. The other is a 21 millimeter spacer. Now, you're probably thinking, hey, Tony, that doesn't add up to 55 millimeters. One important concept to understand as well is native back focus. From your camera sensor to the edge of your flange is called native back focus. And in the case of the ASI 533MC and the ASI 2600MC, the native back focus on both of those is 17 and a half millimeters. So now when you add the 17 and a half millimeter native back focus to the 16 and a half millimeter spacer and the 21 millimeter spacer, you now have 55 millimeters. Now always check your camera manufacturer's website because the native back focus of your specific camera might be different. And that's an important number to know, especially if you need spacers. 
Now, the first thing I like to do is set up my telescope outside during the day and point it at a distant tree or a mountain, just something that's easy to see as it starts coming in focus. Now, once I have my telescope set up outside during the day, pointed at a tree or a mountain, what I'll do is I'll take my camera and I'll install the spacers. I'll go ahead and install my adapter so I can install my camera assembly with the 55 millimeters of back focus into my focuser assembly. Now I recommend starting with 55 millimeters of back focus because that's the general rule of thumb. Now once your camera assembly is installed, what you want to do is rack your focuser all the way out. I recommend starting all the way out because it's a lot easier to see if your draw tube is getting close to the body of your focuser. Now there's two ways to do this. One is with your focuser knobs if you do not have an auto focuser. So you'll use your focuser knobs to rack your focuser all the way out. If you have an auto focuser, what you'll need to do is what I do is connect it into Nina. This way I can monitor the step position. And my autofocuser came with a remote, so I'll use the remote to rack my focuser all the way out. If you don't have a remote, that's okay. What you'll do is in Nina, shown here is the step position go to. You'll use uh, small increments of adjustment to rack your focuser all the way out. Now, you want to be very careful if you're using an automatic uh, focuser. You don't want to rack your focuser so far out that it bottoms out and causes slippage within your focuser assembly. That can cause damage. The same thing, when you start coming back in, you want to make sure that you don't bottom out and cause slippage. That's why I like to start out because it's easier to see if the draw tube's about to hit the body. Now, once your draw tube is all the way out, what I do is I'll take my camera and I'll either connect it in Nina and use a loop of short exposures, 0.5 second, 0.3 second, whatever the case might be, or I'll connect my camera in SharpCat and bring up live view. Now, once I have the image on the screen and my draw tube is all the way out, I'm gonna start racking my focuser in. And what I'm looking for is the image to start coming into focus. Now, once you're in focus, you're pretty much done. There's one thing that you want to keep in mind. How far out or how far in is your draw tube? And that's important because if your draw tube is too far out, that can lead to flexure, sometimes some balance issues. And if your focuser is too far in, you're leaving no room for adjustment. So you want to have your focuser draw tube in an ideal position as well. So now let's talk back focus. Let's say that your draw tube is way, way too far out for comfort. You're in focus, but it's too far out to be comfortable with. Or let's say that you're just starting to get focus and you're too far out. What you need to do is force the draw tube back in. And how you do that is add a spacer. By adding a spacer or increasing your back focus, the distance from your sensor to your draw tube, your focuser or your draw tube has to be further in in order to get your camera in the same position. On the flip side, if your draw tube is too far in, you're in focus or you're just starting to get focus and you're too far in, you need to adjust your back focus, the distance between your sensor and your draw tube. And what you need to do is get rid of a spacer. Getting rid of a spacer is gonna bring your camera closer to your draw tube, thus making your draw tube have to be further out in order to keep your camera in the same position. Now, once you have focus and your draw tube is in an ideal position, you're done. 
what I would recommend doing, if you have an autofocuser like this, take a look at the step position and jot it down. That's going to be a good starting point. If you don't have an autofocuser and you're using your knobs, take note or mark where your draw tube is because that's going to be an ideal starting position. Now, you don't have to worry about doing this anymore. You can just set up at night before you image and you know exactly where to start your focusing. And I say starting point because remember, temperature affects focus. So this is going to be a good spot to start and then dial your focus in from there. So the next video, we're going to be talking about fine tuning your back focus, especially if you're using accessories like a coma corrector, which require very specific back focus and I hope that you found that useful. If you did, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. Drop a comment in the comment section. What questions do you have? Did you find this useful? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.